So now this movie is going to work through the various questions that are associated with combining equations. These are fun ones. Um, once it clicks, I hope you'll find that they're nice little cute puzzles. Until it clicks, however, it's complete nonsense. It's horrible. So let's see if we can't work our way through these questions. And they're all based upon three concepts. The first concept is that when you flip an equation, you change the sign of delta H. So in other words, if you flip products and reactants, you flip the left and the right, well then you change the sign of delta H. If it's endothermic, when you write it, flip it around, it obviously becomes exothermic. Second concept is when you take an equation and you multiply its coefficients by two or three or a half or three halves, you would multiply delta H by that same amount. And then the third concept is the whole idea. It's put as Tess's law, but it's much more general than that. It is a thermodynamic function, which means that H, the enthalpy, is a value at the start and a value at the end. And delta H is just that N value minus the starting value, regardless of how you got from the start to the end. Delta H enthalpy is a state function. So the change in a state function is the same no matter how you got from the start to the end. And that's how we, the idea that we use to solve all of these problems here. So a nice simple one using letters. Some people like letters to start, some don't. I've got an equation here. 2d plus a goes to 4c. And I would like to know the enthalpy change, the heat change, going from where I've got a D and an A to where I've made 4C. And now I've got three equations here that you can see have the A's and the D's and the C's. I've also got these B's in there somewhere. Well, if I can put these equations together in some way, if I can modify them in some way, so that when I put those modifications together, I get this overall equation, then I modify the delta H values in the same way, put all those delta H values together, and I get delta H for that equation. Now, the way I like to solve these problems is by always thinking about what I'm heading for. So in this one here, I would like a mole of D on the left-hand side. Well, the only equation, and let's label those equations, the only equation that I have that has a D is one that's got a D on the right-hand side. No problem. I'll take that equation, equation of three, and flip it so that now it reads D goes to 2C. So I've got my D on the left-hand side, and I'd also like an A on the left-hand side. Well, what do I have here that has an A on the left-hand side? Well, it's easy, equation one, just use it as it is. Now, if I added these two equations together, I'd get D plus A, which is perfect, on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, I get 2C, I actually want 4C, but instead of C, I'd have this horrible 2B. So now to finish it off, there's two ways you can think about doing it. One way is you could say, I've got 2C on the right. I'd like to have 4C on the right. So if I take equation 2 and multiply it by 2, then I would get 2C, that further 2C that I need on the right. The other way to think about it, and we'll be approaching um, questions in future using either of these philosophies, either always look at what you're heading for, always look at where you are. So after three and one, if you remember, I had my A and my D where I wanted, I had 2C where I wanted, but I had a 2B on the right. How do I get rid of 2B on the right? So it's not 2B, haha, <laughs> little pun to show how well-rounded my education is. Anyway, we don't want 2B on the right, so the way I get rid of 2B on the right is to put a 2B on the left so they can cancel out. And to get 2B on the left, I would again take equation two, multiply it by two. Now, when I add up all those equations, the 2Bs cancel out as we expected. Left-hand side becomes a D plus A, right-hand side is 2C plus 2C or 4C. So when I modify equations one, two, and three in this way, and then I add them together, I get the equation I want. Well, the whole point is now, if I modify delta H in the same way and put those together, I'll get the delta H for the overall equation. So three was minus 20, but I flipped it. So that becomes 
plus 20. Don't you love that animation there? Equation 1 we used as was, so delta H is 40. And equation 2 started off as minus 50, but I doubled it. So I've got a double delta H to give me minus 100. Add all those up. And delta H for that overall equation is minus 40. Question 10. Same kind of idea. Two nasty pollutants present in car exhaust, blah, 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 blah. Important area of research is to find ways, blah, blah, blah. According to, here's an equation. CO plus NO goes to CO2 plus FN2. And I want delta H for that reaction. And I'm given, and let's put some colors in here, two equations to help me out. So let's label those one and two. Now you can see when I color them, obviously, one and two have got in there the components of the equation that I want. So let's see how we need to modify one and two. So when I add them together, I get this equation and that will tell me how to modify the delta H's to get the overall delta H. So obviously I want a CO on the left hand side. Equation one gives me a CO on the left hand side. So let's use equation one. And not only does it give me a CO on the left hand side, it also gives me a CO2 on the right hand side. Life is so wonderful. Now question two, equation two, how am I going to bring that in? Well, several ways we could think about it. The first way would be to say, well, I want a half N2 on the right. This has got a whole N2 on the left, so I have to flip and half. Or we can say I want an NO on the left. This has got two NO on the right, so again, flip and half. So we'll take equation two, flip it and halve it. And when we do that, we get NO on the left instead of 2NO on the right. We get a half N2 on the right instead of a whole N2 on the left. And we get a half O2 on the right instead of a whole O2 on the left. Add those together. The O2s cancel out and I'm left with the overall equation that I was so desirous of to start with. Now we wanted to get delta H for this whole thing. So let's modify these delta H's accordingly and add them together. Equation one, I used as was minus 283. Equation two was 180.6, but I flipped it. So that would have made it minus 180.6, but then I halved it, which becomes minus 90.3. So now add those together and I get minus 373.3 kilojoules. Did you start to think these are fun? I hope so. Question 11, a little bit more interesting. Given the following thermochemical equations, what's the standard enthalpy of formation of propane? Well, first of all, of course, standard enthalpy of formation of propane, which is C3H8, is where I take one mole of my substance, so that's C3H8, making it from its elements in a natural state. Well, the natural state for carbon is solid carbon. Natural state for hydrogen is H2. And then I have to balance that, of course. 3C solid plus 4H2 gas goes to C3H8. And this is the equation for which I want to get delta H. And these are the ones I'm told about. So let's label them. And now let's see how we can get what we want. Well, the first thing I would do is I would say I want three carbons. See how I'm emphasizing the carbon there? So what equation do I have that will give me three carbons on the left? And the answer is take equation one that's got one carbon on the left and multiply it by three. So now I've got my three carbons. Okay. Now, the next thing I could do, I could say, well, I've got three oxygens. I don't want three oxygens. Or I could say I've got three CO2s. I don't want three CO2s. Or I could just simply say, I want, to steal on the left, four H2s. So what do we have that will give us four H2s? And the answer is equation two, just multiply it by four. And that now gives me four H2s on the left. Now, the last thing is, and they still want a propane on the Right. So what equation will give me a propane on the right? Well, the equation three has got a propane, but it's got a propane on the left. So what I have to do is take equation three and flip it. When I do that, I get this. Now, hopefully you will see by this stage that uh, when I add all these together, I'll get some crossings out. I have three CO2 that I made after equation one on the right. Well, that cancels with the three CO2s on the left that I got by flipping three. 
I made four H2Os on the right after I did equation two, but when I flipped equation three, I had four H2Os on the left. And then equations one and two each had O2s on the left, a total of five. Well, when I flipped equation three, I had five O2s on the right. So add all that up together after lots of crossing out, and I do indeed get my heat of formation for propane. Now let's uh, modify the delta H's in the same way. Equation one started at minus 393, but I used three of those, so that's minus 1179. Equation two, I had minus 286, but I used four of those, so that's minus 1144. And finally, equation three started at minus 2452, but I flipped it, and so now that's plus 2452. Add these up together, these modified delta H's, and I get the answer, 129 kilojoules per mole. Let's do one more. We've gone from two equations to three equations to four equations. Label them one, two, three, four. And here is the equation that I'm asked for, HNO2 and a little roller. So first thing I'll do is let's see if I can get HNO2 on the left. Well, the only equation in all this mess I have has got HNO2 as equation four, but it has two HNO2s. I only want one of them, so we'll take equation four and divide it by two. Next thing I want is an NaCl on the left. Do I have an equation that gives me NaCl on the left? Indeed, equation three, but again, I'll have to halve it to get that. So now I've got my HNO2 and my NaCl. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff here. Now notice as well, equation three, when I got my NaCl on the left, I also got an HCl on the right. Okay, so I'm looking good. I've got HNO2, I've got NaCl, and I've got HCl. Last thing I want to get is I would like to get an NaNO2. So how do I get NaNO2? Well, I take equation one that has NaNO2 there and again, halve it. So now I put all that together and I get my NaNO2. Now at this stage, we have to see how we're doing. I got rid of my half H2Os from equations four and three. Um, I've also should have the capability right here to get rid of a half Na. Two O's, half Na2O is on the right here. It's actually on the left here, and that's a very long equation. It's on the left there. But now I've still got some NO's, a half and a half, or a half an NO, a half NO2 on the left, a half N2O, and a half O2 on the right. Need to get rid of those. Well, if you look at what we have here, equation two has NO and NO2 and N2O and O2 in exactly the same positions. But of course, I don't want those exact positions. I don't want a half NO on the left. So I have to do something that gives me a half NO on the right. I don't want a half NO2 on the left. So I have to bring in an equation that's got a half NO2 on the right and so on. So I have to take equation two and I'll have to flip it and then I'll have to halve it. And when I take equation two and flip and halve it, I get a half N2O plus a half O2. They were on the right, now they're on the left. What was on the left, NO and NO2, is now on the right, NO and NO2, but they're halved. And now I can go ahead and cancel all those things out. Half NO2 on the right cancels out with a half NO2 on the left. A half O2 on the right cancels out with a half O2 on the left. And then, of course, the half O2s and half end O2s cancel out lefts and rights. So now, lots of red ink. It looks like one of my old English exercises when I was at school. Add it all together and I get exactly what I want. And now what do I do with these delta H values? Well, four started off, equation four started off as 34. There it is. I halved it. So now it's 17. Equation three started off at 507. I've halved it, so now it's 253.5. Question one started off at minus 427, but I've halved it, so minus 213.5. And finally, two started off as minus 43. Well, I flipped it to plus 43, and then I halved it, giving me 21.5. So now when I add up all those sort of pinky values, 
I get the final answer, 78.5 kilojoules. Fun questions, once they click, till they do, it's banging your head. But hopefully, as is often the case, when you stop banging your head, it feels really good.